Man make fire for the Golden Crispies. Crickets, a little water slap. Hey, uh, did we get that jerky out of the boat? Dude, I, I, I put mine away, but uh, I'm pretty sure I could hear raccoons chewing on jerky <laughs> at three in the morning. Oh, I can't wait to see what kind of uh, interesting little mess they left us in the silver bullet. Might have to hose out some raccoon jerky poop out of there before we go fishing. I don't know, dude. I haven't seen it. Hey. Okay. I think you might have been dreaming about it. They left it alone. I did see one fishing with one of your fishing poles. So. <laughs> Give it a dangle. Here's what I'm thinking, Craig. We go try to find us a non windy steep bank like what we ended on yesterday, I'm 100% going to put a blooper on it. And we got blue blue. Let's go. Fish out. Let's get it. We also have no gas. You need to go to the marina? I don't even know where a marina is that has gas. Well, I do, but it's really far away. Well, y'all, we just found our bank, but the trolling motor is not working. So, if any of you all have this trolling motor, I would like to know. I'm going to try cutting all the power off for just a second. See if that affects anything. This trolling motor. These little icons light up. And they all need to be green for this thing to work. And it's weird. You power this thing on like a, you know, you would a little electronic device. This little button. And there's fish coming up, popping out in front of us. And I can't get this thing to fire up correctly. It gives me this loud beeping noise, and I don't know what that means. There's no function here. Oh, we just turned on. Thank God. I was about to say, we're about out of gas. We don't have a troll motor. This is about to be a really bad deal. <laughs> about to be a long swim. Oh, and Craig's got one on. First one of the day. Okay, I was... Putting, I was putting on a blooper, that's what I was doing. First one of the day, largely off the boulder. I'm gonna snag it. I'm not putting my hands in that thing's mouth with that treble hook. Dude, come on. What kind of cool angler move is that? These are, these are important hands, Craig. I'm gonna have to make videos <laughs> with these hands. I gotta edit and type and <laughs> do all kinds of stuff with these hands. That's a good first fish, dude. I thought it was gonna be a smallmouth the way it came off that boulder. Not done yet, are you? The reason I'm not flipping him. Oh, look, he's got it wedged in his mouth. You can back grab him. There you go. Look how he's got that in his mouth. Well, it's, I think it flipped when he was jumping. They're definitely slurping that combo, bait and color. It's a nice, healthy first fish. A nice fish, man. Grab those pliers real quick. Snag that front one, thank you. So what did you think about sleeping next to the water last night? That whole tent, cot situation? What did you think good. about that? My roommate was snoring, so I, I don't know if I'd call it sleep necessarily, uh, but pretty cozy. Good breeze. Splashing water against the rocks was nice. Just the freaking roommate, man, just sawing logs over there. <clears throat> They're sneaky out here. Like, the bite isn't anything that... They're definitely sneaky. Isn't earth shattering. And these things bite. Oh, if that's not a fish, I quit. They're not as predictable. Oh my God, you son of a dick. You're a son of a dick. <laughs> if that's not a fish, I compliment your cast and let me throw right next to it and catch the fish I was about to catch. You wanna know, you wanna know the That was thing? such a. <laughs> I was trying to hit that crack like eight feet left. Well, <laughs> and I landed well you dialed it into the juice. <laughs> what a. Green fish snatching son of a gun. You are. You get for snoring all night long. Right there. Is that what I get for snoring? That's it. 
You sound like a freight train coming through town. <laughs> oh, oh, look! Oh, oh, oh dude, they're, they're busting! They need to come bust on my shatter shad blooper here. That is a. Dude! What are you doing? I did that on purpose. Quit casting at my fish. I did that on purpose. Oh my gosh! Right in front. I was just having it sit still. Oh my gosh. That one, that one just came out of nowhere. I was just letting it sit, looking around. Well, I was weird. It's like we started shallowing up. Oh gosh! Sucked it under. Yeah, it was like a, a mouse fart. And it's about what you get on a mouse fart sounding bite. They're definitely liking the paws though. Get that one. You got him. What do we got? It's about the same. <laughs> His diaper just fell off. I saw it. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna doubt the man that's the the popper king. I was shocked. Look at that guy coming and getting him some morning, Ooh. morning juice. Gonna give him the old slow torture. Whoa. Oh, dude, Whoa, he came off. I know that was a better one. I don't think this color they're they're dialing on. I think I need to go with like a translucent where they can't see it quite as good. I don't know if we're gonna run out of gas. I don't know what an eighth of a tank really means on this boat. I can't see the gas tank. You know, it was half a tank full just the other day. So I don't know, maybe I ripped it a little too hard, but we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn today. Found a pump, ladies and gentlemen. Just takes uh, 325 a gallon, you know, that's three times what it would cost you. I was going to say, man, when we get to jig fishing. Jig bite, baby, jig bite. It's not a fast fishing trip with Lake Fork. I mean, really a lot of jig bite. I know. It finally pulled one, and he actually grabbed it with some authority. Had that little juice, it just pegged. There's a good fish. See you, baby. He had it. Still got it. Oh, dead gun. Little guy. Having a hard time keeping them connected here today. I knew it was gonna be. Oh, there's a good bite there. Sun. Oh my. I mean, just oh, took my legs. Took my pinchers, y'all. Common, common theme on a bass that's wanting to eat a crawfish. You attack the pinchers first, rip them off savagely and then come back and eat the body like a shrimp basically turning a lobster into a shrimp i'd imagine a a pincher coming out the back end is not the best so it's always good for them to rip those off first fire on up we gotta get craig back home he said he wanted a little adventure in his life i think we got it killer job on the top water by the way you zoned in and you went to work. I may come back out here and try to zone in, try to catch a big one off the docks, and also try to get some food, y'all. So we had we had these delicious steaks last night, and there's not much left in the old cooler. I got enough for lunch, but I got nothing for dinner. I'm gonna stay here tonight, so I'm thinking if I could get some of these white bass, a couple of these uh, juicies, throw them in the, I don't have any grease, We'll just cook them like primitive style. That'll be the dinner. Pretty good morning dangle though. Let's rip it. So best friend Craig has left. We still got these airplanes flying over. They are doing just constant uh, patrol over this lake. It's crazy y'all. So sorry about the noise, but I wanted to show you all the camp scene. Dang, y'all, I like this system right here. Look at these bunks, man. 
come down here to the lower bunk. Oh, that's a squeezer there. Sort of got to go for like a like a bottom roll in. Oh yeah, that's tight. That's tight. Oh, I think Amy's gonna be sleeping down here on this one. I bought these off a buddy of mine that does a lot of camping too, and I think he got them at Cabela's. And these are just the large size. The pads fit perfectly. I feel like hers. These are the Teton large pads, and I have the extra large for my extra large cot. So. One family camping scenario, that'll be over there. But rolling out is an issue. Like if you had one of those oh shoot at night moments, hitting your head, at least you're hitting a cot pad, but yeah, it's it's close quarters. Oh. <laughs> we are sitting midday, it's one o'clock. Now we got mission meal time up next. We gotta go find some food. Okay, hopefully we got some dinner here. Got the squigglies on the bottom. Got a 10,000 fish death stalker. This thing is an insane white bass catcher. Let's see if we can get it done here. These things are pretty finicky. They're just like tapping it. This is so weird. Folks, you're not gonna believe what I got going on here. But I've got a school of catfish. I thought my GoPro was rolling, but it wasn't. I just caught a catfish, y'all, on a spoon. I've caught two so far. I got one in there. Keeper. Minimum length on channel cats, blue cats, and their hybrid subspecies is 12 inches. These little tasties down here, you're not gonna believe how I'm catching them. 10,000 fish, death stalker, y'all. If I was in a survival situation, I could carry like a couple lures, that would definitely be one of them. It catches anything. Watch this. It's interesting, blue cats are a little different than channel cats because they'll they eat shad. And I think they're hanging down here around these white bass because they're kind of eating their, their leftovers. And I'm getting these weird taps, like I'm getting bumped right now. Eventually one will, will grab on. Oh God. They like it just sitting there and then you give a little wiggle. Oh, got him. Oh, he's a spinner. Catfish spinning on the line. Come here, baby, look at that. It's not a keeper. I lassoed him. On a school of catfish. Unbelievable. Just need me like a 12, another 12 incher for dinner. Oh God, oh geez. Got ripped the rod out of my hand. I just can't stand this thing, it's too shiny. Oh, got him. Just came after it. There we go. That one looked like it came off the bottom or something. This might be a little better. Could keep. Well, that's about the size of them down there. This guy might not make the cut here. He's not gonna make the cut. Just gooing up my line. This is the craziest bite. Never would I have expected this. Catfish, baby! Not big enough. I know, buddy. There's so many of you down there, it's insane. It's not like I'm snagging these things, guys. I mean, they're just, they're loaded on the bottom. I, I loaded, I've never seen anything like this. Smacking it. Got him, jeez. Be an eater. Be an eater, That's my, that might be an eater right there now. 11. Not gonna make it. Oh, there we go. Bean eater! Man, you look like an 11 incher again. Where's your grown ups at? You're so unsupervised down there, just munching away on little shad lures. Didn't your parents teach you to eat something stinky? So I got me a kitty cat. That's gonna be going in my belly. I had a bunch of little catfish bites. I only ended up with one keeper catfish. That's gonna be tasty, but I need something else. I need another little morsel. And it's not gonna be a bass. We still got a lot of daylight left, y'all. A lot of daylight left. Large mouth on. Come here, dude. There's a good large mouth on a point. Here's the old midday largey. And we'll let it go. Just another fun fish out here. 
fishing freaks after getting a few bass out there on the rocks I said it is just too hot I'm gonna come in here and uh, and just chill in my tent so I want to go out in the next 30 minutes or so and just try to pop one on the nose get them in slap the sides off it and get the fire started and put it on the heat it's literally time to go catch our dinner it is finally shady and cooling down. I've got the Death Stalker ready to go. I've got a top water ready to go. Oh gosh, I smoked it. What is that? It's tiny. What the heck? What are you? Are you my dinner? That is a dinner if I've ever seen one, ladies and gentlemen. What in the world were you doing hitting this thing? But thank you very much. That's gonna be a tasty treat. Everyone likes a bluegill. Honestly, that might do it right there. It is time for fire in a miraculous last minute victory with a bluegill. We got that one extra tasty morsel. I don't know how I did not hook up with a white bass. Didn't even see one tickle the surface with its little mouth. Nevertheless, we got something tastier, so it doesn't even matter. While I was out, Dometic almost ran out of juice. So it's currently on 6%. I'm gonna switch over to the Jackery unit. Also good practicing for more uh, isolated situation. So we'll go ahead and switch that power system over here. Wabam DC 97% and we are back in action friends. So to get this fire going the best resource for tinder around is cedar bark. A lot of cedar trees in this part of Texas. So this cedar bark right here I'm gonna gather a bunch of it light it on fire and uh, the rest of our kindling that I got from the treehouse should right, oh my gosh, look. Whoa, what do we got here? You guys could be dinner. We have our gill, we have our catfish, we have eight million bugs around us for some reason. Last night, no bugs, tonight, Thousands of bucks. A lot of crazy things happen in the atmosphere. Full atmosphere. Full moon. Uh, the bite was weird today. Really, really weird. There's a bug hatch of some sort. I'm gonna get the flay knife out, do some work, throw them on the Barbie. Okay, this is what we got going. We did these fish up survival style, I'm just gonna call it. Uh, catfish, I normally skin them. Uh, bluegill, this size I normally fillet, but uh, I just descaled it like I did in one of my recent videos. You know, take the heads off, just take the guts out. And I am going to smother these in salt, pepper, garlic. So this is a seasoning me and Stephanie use all the time at the house. It's Cosmo Q's uh, salt, pepper, and garlic mixture. It's, you know, it says it's a dry rub for beef, but we use it on fish, chicken. It's just a great all-purpose. And if you're camping and if you just want something simple, one jar of this and you don't need all these other spices it's really simple it's really good and it goes a long way unfortunately i don't have any olive oil or butter and a skillet where i can really do these up how i like them i just have the coals I'm actually gonna tap those down just a little bit. There we go. So, we're going to straight grilling. Never done it this way before. This catfish is gonna be really interesting, but let's give it a go. Gill. Probably not gonna be the, the most spectacular uh, as far as texture. I'm really interested on the catfish with the skin, but why God gave us beer. Let's go ahead and just attempt a flip here. See if our skin is just stuck. Oh yeah. 
That is looking kind of weird. Oh boy, that is toast. Starting to get some curl. Let's check on the gill. Oh yeah, the gill's getting a little too fiery. Okay, friends, let me try to eat this before the bugs eat me. Let's see what we got going here. This is like a little side meat piece on the catfish. Oh, pretty good flavor. Flavor strong, actually. I want to see how the bluegill turned out. Oh, bug just went in my ear hole. I'm not excited about this one. Yeah. Yeah, there's something going on there. I think I just overcooked it. It's kind of charred. Just that skin on the outside. Something's not sitting well with, with me on this one. Yeah, I just overcooked it. Got the skin in there. Side meat's decent. There's just some skin parts that are burned. Aren't good. Man, that's a decent amount of meat off that bluegill. The main course is the kitty cat with the skin on. Very interesting. This is actually the belly, the belly meat right here. Makes this normally a part that gets disregarded. That'll do. That salt, pepper, and garlic, when that hits you, man. There's a lot in there. I, put, I maybe put a little too much. I was scared a lot of it was gonna cook off, but I don't think that's the case. Oh yeah, catfish cooked well. Um, the skin is not something you really wanna tangle with, but I'm doing it. Oh yeah, get in there on that back meat. There we go. Now we're working. Catfish, delicious white meat. Especially a little one like that. So the thing about grilling it is, I think you waste some of the fish because some of the outer parts get cooked. It kind of ruins it and then you're left with the inner meat. So I would much prefer to have a skillet with some olive oil and butter, but I just don't have it. Boy, yeah, get on that back meat right there. Mmm. Falling right off the bones. You should eat it like a corn cob. I'm actually gonna try a little bit of this skin, see how that is. Yeah, I don't, re I don't recommend that. Okay, y'all, final verdict. Catfish, I give like an eight. Pretty daggum good. You know, I, I cooked it with the with fire at first, and I should have let the coals cook down just a little bit more, but really good meat on it. The gill, I don't like it grilled that way with the open fire. Much preferred in the skillet, but the catfish, not bad. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, bone appetite again, literally just down to the bone. Gosh, I could eat another one, but fishing was tough today. But I ended up with these two, and that's what I got. Unfortunately, I am out of food for this trip, y'all. So I'm gonna get up, fish in the morning, and then I'm gonna pack it up and head back to the treehouse. Y'all, I love being out in the woods. I love being next to the water, going fishing, getting your own resources. It just makes you feel good. It makes you feel really accomplished. So keep your outdoor skills sharp, y'all. You never know when it's gonna come in handy. And thank you guys for tuning in today. Go ahead and smash that like button for catching food and eating it by the campfire in the lake. I'm literally sweating out here. I think I'm going to go take a dip in the lake. Rinse off. Cool down. And I'm going to head to bed. Thanks for being here. Wishing you the best of luck in your outdoor adventures. And I'll see you on the next one.